Hello everyone and welcome to Volusia Read Stream, which stands for Science, Technology, Reading, Engineering, Art, and Math. Well today I am delighted to tell you that this is not your typical stream video. You have been chosen to be a contestant on Which Animal is Right? The amazing game show that tests your animal knowledge. I'm your host, Miss Laura from the Port Orange Regional Library, and our game will consist of three rounds of questions, each with a different theme, but all about animals. See how many you can get right. Are you ready to play? Well, I hope so, because it is time for Which Animal is Right? <laughs> Round one of our game is What's in a Name? Animals can have some pretty interesting names, and in this round, you will try to pick the real animal from a list of names that I will read to you. Let's play. Question one. Which is the real name of an animal? A, the black sniffling niffler, B, the green basilisk lizard, or C, the white winged hippogriff? Which animal is right? If you said B, the green basilisk lizard, you are correct. The green basilisk lizard lives in the rainforest of Central America. And one of the amazing things about them is they drop from trees into the water and then run so quickly that it looks like they're walking on the water. The other two animals that were mentioned are actually creatures you can find in a popular book series you may have heard of, Harry Potter. Question two, which is the real name of an animal? A, the tiny barrel sponge, B, the jumbo panda, or C, the giant anteater. Which animal is right? If you said C, the giant anteater, you are correct. There isn't a tiny barrel sponge or a jumbo panda, but you could find a giant barrel sponge, a giant panda, and a giant anteater. And the giant anteater lives in the grasslands and forests of Central and South America, and it can be six and a half, half feet long, and its tongue is two feet long. Think about that. It's amazing. And for the last question of this round, which is the real name of an animal? A, the juggling starfish, B, the decorator crab, or C, the ballerina lobster? which animal is right. If you said decorator crab, you are correct. The decorator crab covers its shell with other shells and materials from the ocean floor in order to blend into its environment. Isn't that amazing to think about? But don't you also wish there was a ballerina lobster or a juggling starfish? Maybe scientists will discover those someday. But round one is done. How did you do? But before we move on to round two, we need to take a short break to hear from our sponsors. Ever wish that you could discover a new animal right from the comfort of your own home? Well, now is your chance. All you need to find a new animal right where you are sitting today is to use your imagination and make one up. <laughs> yes, you will not be able to see this animal that you imagined roaming around outside. Yes, you will not be able to study this animal like a scientist would, but you can see this animal make its home in your home very easily. Let me show you how. All you need is a piece of paper, something to write with, some scissors, and four cups or containers. And let me show you what we'll do. You take your paper, and you're going to make four columns on the paper. And in the first column, you're going to make a list of adjectives or descriptive words. Things like fluffy, or maybe creepy, or tall. <laughs> in the second column, you're going to put verbs or action words, things like walking, or jumping, or skipping, or laughing, or spinning, or whistling, anything you can think of. In the third column, you're gonna put habitats or places where your amazing animal find might be. Maybe things like rainforest or grassland or a pond. Use your imagination and decide what you would put there. And then in the fourth column, you're just gonna make a list of animals. So cats, bats, antelopes, lizards, bears, your favorite animals, make a list and put them there. 
The next step is to just cut up your paper. I'm not gonna do it all right now, <laughs> but you can cut it up and cut up each word that you put there, fold them up and put them in the cups. So you're going to wanna put all your animals in one cup, your habitats in a cup, your adverbs in a cup, and your adjectives in the cup. Then all you do is draw one from each cup, put them together, and you have your new amazing imaginary animal. Let's see what we're gonna get today. Shake them up a little bit. Got my first one, second one, third, and then one more to go. Okay, let's see what we get. A tiny swimming marsh hamster. <laughs> So a tiny swimming marsh hamster. So now all I have to do is draw a picture or write a story about this amazing new creature. The possibilities are endless. Now back to our show and round two of which animal is right. Round two is not nice to meet you. <laughs> and in this round, we're gonna test your knowledge of what animals do to protect themselves when they face a predator. I will tell you an animal and also give you some choices of what defenses they may use when they come across an enemy, and you will decide which is the right answer. Let's play! Question 1. What does the deep sea shrimp do to ward off enemies? A. Swim quickly to the surface of the ocean, faster than any enemy can swim. B. Spray glowing goo on the animals so that now they glow in the dark. Or C, let out a high-pitched scream that scares them away. Well, if you guess B, spray glowing goo, you are correct. They eject the glowing goo on predators, which makes them glow and be visible in the dark ocean. This lets the bioluminescent shrimp and other creatures see them and stay clear. Isn't that amazing? Question two, what does the boxer crab do to defend itself? A. Use poisonous anemones as boxing gloves. B. Fold up and look like a box, making it hard for enemies to pick it up. Or C. Poke opponents with its claws while standing on only two legs. If you said A. Pick up poisonous anemones, you are right. It waves them around in the face of its attacker, just like a boxer in the ring. Question three, and the last one of this round, what does the budget's frog do to keep enemies away? Does it A, burrow into the ground, hiding in spaces that their predators can't reach? B, stand on their tiptoes and scream? Or C, poke predators with poisonous spines on their legs? Well, if you said B, stand on their tiptoes and scream, you are correct! The budget frog lives in the rivers, streams, and lakes in southern South America. When they feel threatened, they puff up, standing on their tiptoes, and they let out a very high-pitched scream. This scares away their predators. How about we try it? Get up on your tiptoes, puff up, and go eee! Well, round two is complete, and it is time for another message from our sponsors. The creators of the amazing game show, Which Animal is Right, now bring you an equally amazing game that you can play with a group right at home called Animal Scientist Says. Each round, one person is the animal scientist and they call out the names of animals or actions that animals would make and everyone else that's playing has to do that action. The only catch is that the leader must say the words scientist says before they tell you the animal or action. If they don't, don't do the action. If you do and they don't say scientist says, then you are out of the game. You keep on playing until there is only one person standing and they are the winner of that round. I think we should play. I'm going to be the animal scientist because look at me. <laughs> and you follow along. Make sure you listen closely. Listen for scientist says. Let's go. Okay. Scientist says, throw glowing goo like a shrimp. Scientist says, box like a boxer crab. Screech like a budget frog. 
Did you screech like a budded frog? Well, I'm sorry to say that if you did, you're out. I didn't say, scientist says. <laughs> well, I encourage you to play this at home. Gather a group of family and friends and think of crazy animals that you can make them move like. Make sure though that you always say, scientist says. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. In round three, we're gonna be playing and the winner is. In this round, I will give you a category and you will choose the correct animal to win that category, like longest or largest. So think carefully, choose wisely, and you may also be the winner. Let's play. Question one. Which of the following animals has the longest tail? A, the lemur, B, giraffe, or C, long-tailed grass lizard. If you said B, giraffe, you are correct. A giraffe can have an eight foot long tail. They can also be 18 feet tall and have a 20 inch long purple tongue. <laughs> Other animals may seem to have a longer tail because their bodies are shorter, but when it comes to this record, the giraffe is the winner. Question two. Which of the following has the largest eye? A, the colossal squid, B, the blue whale, or C, the ostrich? If you said A, colossal squid, you are right. The eye of a blue whale is six inches in diameter, which is large, but considering how big a blue whale is, the eye isn't as big as you would expect. And the eye of an ostrich is bigger than its brain but it still isn't as big as the eye of a colossal squid. Colossal squids are hard to study in the wild, but scientists have been able to discover that their eye is the size of a basketball or a dinner plate, which helps it see in the darkness of the deep ocean. In question three, our last question of this round and our last question of the game, which of the following is the longest? A, a blue whale, B, lion's mane jellyfish, or C, the bootlace worm? If you said C, bootlace worm, you are correct. All three of these animals are very long. The blue whale has been known to reach 100 feet. The lion's mane jellyfish can reach 120 feet. But the bootlace worm, which lives at the bottom of the oceans along the coast of Europe, has been known to reach 180 feet. So they are hard to measure since they also stretch out. Well, our time here today is over and I hope you have enjoyed playing Which Animal is Right? Every contestant is leaving here today with an amazing prize package that's worth cannot be measured. No matter how many questions you got right, you have won an all expense paid trip to the local library where you can explore the stacks and learn more and more. And more, and more, and even a little more, and maybe some more, <laughs> and more and more about the animals you heard about today. While there, you can also get a library card, which gives you lifelong access to databases and other digital resources, which you can find at volusialibrary.org slash kids. What could be better? Congratulations, and to celebrate, I encourage you to start yelling like a howler monkey, which is the loudest animal that you can find on land. Or if you're surprised that you did so well in the game today, I encourage you to start jumping up and down like an armadillo. That's what they do when they want to scare off a predator. And maybe it would scare those around you <laughs> playing the game. And if you're tired after all of this brain use, I encourage you to take a nap like a wood frog, though maybe not for as long as them because they can freeze solid and hibernate all winter long. Well, thank you for playing today and please tune in to another Volusia Read stream and continue learning and having fun with us. See you next time, bye.